All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our monthly market updates for busy people series. I'm Lee Chai, a financial market analyst and coach at Beyond Insight. And this is your express session to get up to date with the stock market. We'll cover the market highlights, major stock market indices performance, and the upcoming potential opportunities and risks out there. Just an important note before we proceed, whatever we share here today is based on the latest data and facts. If there is further development, things may change. And we want to make sure that you know we are not a licensed investment advisor and we do not manage customers' fund. We are an educational institution, so our purpose here is to educate people so that you can make your own decisions and be your own investment manager. That way, you have a better control over your decisions and hence be able to get better results. If you are looking for stock tips, this is not the place for it. All information we share here are meant for educational purposes only and must not be taken as a recommendation to buy or sell. All right, as usual, let's start with the market highlights. How many of you have been active in the stock market over the past months? You may type in the chat whether you are active in the stock market over the past few months. All right, Lex, me. All right, so me. All right, a lot of people, me. All right, so how was the market performance? How was the market perform? Yes, volatile. So in the past few months, there are some uncertainties in the stock market where the stock market pulled back after inflation data higher than expected over the past few months and also some geopolitical tension in the Middle East. The pullback after inflation is because the data higher than expected over the past few months for the inflation data and the geopolitical uncertainties causing the oil prices to go up. Hence, the market anticipate that the coming months inflation may not be uh, low as well because of all this geopolitical tension and rising oil price. And with that, uh, the market also start to anticipate the inflation could continue to be sticky and potential there will be a delayed rate cut or a reduction in the rate cut cycle. So what causing this uh, high inflation based on our data is due to the strong housing demand in the United States, strong employment data, high transportation services costs, and also at the same time, we have this geopolitical tension causing inflation to remain sticky. So with all this uh, data around geopolitical tension, high inflation, higher than expected inflation, there will be potential delay in rate cut to September 2024. So this is just an anticipation from the market participants and potentially lesser rate cut if let's say the inflation remains high. This is for the United States. However, we do notice that the Switzerland Central Bank already has its rate cuts early on and the European Central Bank may follow soon during their June ECB meeting. And this may not be a positive news or good news for the US stock market because if let's say Switzerland bank start to cut their interest rate and also the Europe, European Union start to cut their, European Central Bank start to cut their interest rate, what likely will happen to the dollars? Anyone would like to answer me in the chat? If let's say Swiss Central Bank start to cut their interest rate, European Central Bank also follow and cut their interest rate. What happened to the US dollar? Yes, the US dollar may increase and a strong dollar usually may not favorable for the stock market. However, with all these facts I mentioned above, inflation, geopolitical tension, strong dollars, what investors and traders can do? So investors can be more selective during this period and only enter or trade strong stocks with good valuations near a very strong technical level. For example, a stock with a, a great fundamental stocks with strong support, with great valuations, then it will be fulfilled the criteria for investor. And traders can trade stocks with benefits from the current macro situation or just short the sectors that uh, affected by all these uh, news. All right, so it's time to be picky for investors and also traders. Only trade conservative, conservative level and at the same time, make sure you only, be, you only trade those uh, strong stocks and be selective enough to not to take 
every single opportunity you see. And like usual, as an investor, we usually take a look on the big picture or outlook of the global stock market. And we want to select the most consistent market. So currently, currently the US market still in an uptrend, but there is some pullback recently. All right, in an uptrend, but you can see that recently there is some pullback and the stock market pullback since second half of uh April, I think late April or mid April, it start to pull back, but it does not, does not mean we can buy immediately. All right, so investor need to be selective, like I mentioned earlier, only invest in strong fundamental stock, and when only when they are near strong support level or strong technical level. This is because all these funds may come back in once the leading strong stock reach a good valuation level, and at the same time, what traders can do. Traders can trade sectors that are beneficial from the current macro outlook or short the affected sectors. For example, those affected by all this high inflation, sectors that are affected by all this high inflation, affected by all this uh, geopolitical tension or rising oil, oil price, or they can even take advantage to trade some of the oil related tickers while the oil price is going up. And like I mentioned earlier, it's time to be choosy or selective, be selective. So investors or traders both need to wait for technical com uh, confirmation before enter any of their position. And also investors need to combine with fundamental information as well, other than the technical level. All right, this is for the United States. Let's move on to the Asian market where we take a look on the China market. And for the China market, the Chinese government and also China Central Bank apply a lot of monetary policies and also fiscal policies, especially after the Chinese New Year, back a few months ago. And the stock market likely has been bottomed with all this measure, but it also does not mean it will turn into the market immediately. However, we do notice that recently, the stock charts or the price, the index, uh, index charts in China market start to show some early sign of trend recovery. However, we need to monitor this further. This is because China still has some fundamental economic problem, for example, geopolitical tension with the US, especially on the tech war and also trade war. And at the same time, the economy also having some issues or fundamental issues, for example, high youth unemployment rate, deflation situation where they have negative inflation. And at the same time, what happened to their property market? Anyone can answer me in the chat for China, what happened to their property market? All right, at the same time, China also having property crisis and also foreign fund outflow. Hence, uh, in technic hence we can see that in technical standpoint, there is an early trend reversal. However, ba however based on overall economy situations, there are still some uncertainty uncertainties there. So, Investors and traders, if let's say you are interested in China stocks, you may need to monitor further first before enter any position in those China stocks. Because yes, despite technical standpoint showing some early trend reversal, but at the same time, the fundamental situations over in China still are gloomy and uncertain. All right, so this, this market for China market, we may need to continue to monitor further. And next will be the Hang Seng Index, the Hong Kong market. So for Hong Kong, it's sort of like a double whammy uh, situation where they caught in the US-China trade war or tech war crossfire. And also at the same time, they are quite exposed to the global market. And at the same time, they are closely linked with the China market as well. And now they also shown some early recovery from the technical charts as well. From the past few days, you can see that some trend reversal happening in the Hong Kong market as well, other than China market. But like I mentioned early, macro-wise, economy situation-wise, there are still a lot of uncertainties, especially for Hong Kong and China. And they are still prone to all these tech war and geopolitical issues. Hence, investors and traders, if let's say you're interested in this Hong Kong market and China market, still there are a lot of uncertainties and need to be uh, cautious and monitor how the things develop over there before you invest in those uh, related stocks or indices. However, 
from the technical standpoint, yes, they are both showing some early trend reversal. And if the bull run able to last, it could be a short term or mid term opportunities as well. And lastly, will be our uh, Malaysian uh, FBM KLCI. All right, it con uh, continue its uptrend breakout from the resistance after going sideways for the past few months. And for a small country like Malaysia, it's important the economic growth remains stable and also we have a stable government. This will be the key factors for the continuation of the recovery. This is because small country like Malaysia, we are relying on foreign investment. Hence, the economic growth, the coming economic growth and also the stability of the government will be crucial for the uptrend to be continued. And having said that, there are still a lot of, uh, there are still some strong fundamental companies in Malaysia as well. Hence, you may monitor some of the strong Malaysian stocks as well to take advantage of this uh, trend recovery or economy recovery in Malaysia. So from the overall comparison here, we compare US, China, Hong Kong, and also Malaysia, which market provide the most consistent return? Anyone would like to answer me in the chat? From all these uh, five countries comparison, stock market. Yes, United States provide the most consistent return as you can see from the data here over the past 10 year, the NASDAQ 100 that track the top 100 US tech stocks have been providing 400 over percent of return. And if you average out per year return will be around 40.06%. This is just an average. Of course, there are some uh, up cycle and also downtrend cycle as well. And for the S&P 500 that tracks the top 500 United States stocks, also providing around 170 over percent return over the past 10 years and average out around 17.68% over uh, these 10 years. And for China market, uh, despite 50 point something percent return, it just averaged out per year of 5% and slightly above 5%. And Hang, Hang Seng Index and uh, KLCI has been going on sideways or downtrend, hence it's a negative return over the past 10 years. However, having stated that, again, there is still some strong fundamental stocks or strong stocks in Malaysia market as well, if you know where are they. However, for investors or traders, who are looking for consistent return and also high growth, the US market will have more high growth companies that have strong drivers. So what are the recent stock market drivers or industry trends? Anyone would like to answer me in the chat? What are the recent stock market drivers or industry trends you heard, heard about? All right, AI, semiconductors. Oh, wow, wow, crypto, all right. So in the US, uh, there are strong brand names, uh, strong companies with global exposure. So for example, we have AI or cloud comp computing companies in the US as well with high global exposure. So any one of you come across those AI stocks or cloud computing brand names that you heard of from the United States, you may type in the chat as well. Yeah, we have Nvidia, we have uh, yeah, CrowdStrike, it's an emerging stock, by the way, CrowdStrike. So we have NVIDIA, Microsoft, Google, Amazon. So all these are great companies listed in the US with global exposure and global customer base. So we can see that the companies in US have higher earnings growth and also provide more predictable returns. And other than the market itself, we also see that there are still tons of money on the sideline as well. As of now, a record of 6.3 trillion in cash on the sidelines in the money market. So what are money markets? The money markets is a fixed income asset that funds temporarily park their money when they are in cash position. And it works like almost like our fixed deposit rate in our bank. And one of the reasons investors are currently in the cash position is to take advantage of current high risk fee rate due to the higher interest rate in the US. So anyone of you aware of what is the interest rate in the US? What is the interest rate in the US? It's around 5.5%. And this massive amount of cash 
could act as the fuel to drive the next bull market rallies and may deploy to either stock market or bond market when the Fed start to cut the interest rate or when the funds see that it's time to switch asset from cash to either stock or bonds. Hence, we are still waiting for that uh, changes or the rotation. This is because in early this year, during uh, early part of 2024 and late 2023, the market actually start to uh, switch position from cash to stock or even bonds. However, with the recent inflation data over the first quarter, inflation still remain high, going sideways and higher than expected. We do see that some sell-off recently happened in the stock market and rotated back to the dollar cash position. Hence, we can see that uh, there are some changes in terms of uh, market, anticipation, uh, market participants anticipation about the rate cut. We do need to monitor the upcoming inflation to see the situations, whether any, uh, whether the coming month's inflation data is still going uh, high or gradually coming down. The Fed decisions may affect all these uh, asset rotation as well. Hence, all this cash, uh, 6.3 trillion in money market, when they start to rotate back into all these uh, stock and also bonds, it may fuel the next bull run as well. Hence, we need to monitor the upcoming inflation data and the upcoming central bank, the Fed's uh, statement and also decision as well. And lastly, what as an investor or trader, what should we focus on? And usually we evaluate the risk before we check the potential opportunities. We always plan the defense first before the offense. We protect first, protect our capital first. So let's take a look on the risk first. All right, so the risk here may look like, some may look scary, but however, if we uh, apply the trading plan, uh, do all the due diligence and apply, uh, do trading safely and apply proper risk management and also portfolio management, uh, we will do the, we will already mitigate or reduce a lot of risk from there. All right, so. In trading or investing, it's about risk management, reducing the risk, and also at the same time, find the best opportunities. So let's take a look on, on the potential risk first. So this is about defense, about reducing the risk. All right, so the first risk we do come across will be potential delay or lesser rate cut. So based on the current high inflation, like I shared earlier, sticky inflation, higher than expected inflation, and also, at the same time, housing demand in the US still high. This is because of strong employment. And at the same time, we also see that the transportation costs still remain high in the US as well. And with all this geopolitical tension causing the oil price to continue to go up, the probability of inflation staying high is still there. I would say still some probability there. This is because of the geopolitical tension, rising oil price, strong housing demand, and so on. So the Fed, if let's say the coming months, the inflation remain high, the Fed may delay the interest rate cut. Initially, people are anticipating a June rate cut. This may delay to the September cycle and the, for the first rate cut, and there might be lesser rate cut as well. So initially, market are anticipating many, uh, maybe two to three rate cuts. So now with this sticky inflation, the Fed may change their decision or change their view about the economy. So the next FOMC will be crucial. So the next FOMC will be 2nd of May, Malaysia time, midnight. So it could be uh, the 1st of May in the US. So do watch out for the, uh, the Fed meetings because the Fed meetings will cause some volatility uh, for the market. Uh, if let's say there is some uh, statement or surprise by the Fed. All right. And at the same time, we also need to monitor the inflation reduction sustainability. So in the past, the Fed rate was raising their interest rate. This is because they want to control the pricing. They want to have stable prices. They want to control the inflation by raising the interest rate. So with this uh, prolonged higher than expected inflation, so the Fed may start to uh, change their view again, despite early last year, they mentioned about, okay, potentially rate cut for 2024. But if let's say inflation remain high and part of the goal for the Fed was to control employment, uh, make sure there is a strong employment and at the same time price stability. So this may affect their decision. All right, so they may either delay the rate cut again or reduce the number of rate cuts. All right, so we need to monitor this further. 
uh, the next few inflation data point definitely will be very important. And at the, at the same time, we have geopolitical tension around the world as well. Globally, we are. All right, so currently, how many wars we have globally in, uh, in the world now? How many wars we have? Anyone would like to answer me in the chat? Yeah, we have two wars ongoing. One is in Europe, Ukraine, Russia, and the other one uh, in the Middle East. So we have two wars ongoing and war usually will cause commodities to go up. All right, so war usually will co cause oil price to go up, all these raw materials to go up. And if all these raw materials go up, like oil, oil price going up, what likely side effects it will, it will uh, affect to the inflation? What is the likely effects to the inflation if let's say oil price continue to go up? Yeah, inflation likely to remain stubborn, not necessarily uh, continue to trend up, but it may remain stubborn, it may remain high, it may remain above 3% in the US. So this may cause the inflation continue to be higher than expected. And with higher inflation, then Fed may delay their rate cut or reduce the number of rate cut they original plan to do. All right, so at the same time, other than war, we also have some geopolitical tension around East Asia region, around Asia region, Asia Pacific region. So anyone know what is the geopolitical tension happening in Asia region, Asia Pacific region? Yeah, we have the China-US tech war and China-US trade war. All right, so this likely to stay for a while until uh, likely will be stay on for a few years. We have all these different tech war in different industry segments. For example, semicon, a lot of sanctions, a lot of ban ongoing. And also at the same time, we have EV price war between uh, China company and rest of the world. And also at the same time, there is some Taiwan issue as well, where we have Taiwan have the biggest semiconductor factory uh, in the Asia Pacific region, which is TSMC. And uh, based on recent TSMC earnings also, uh, they are mentioning about price up. So this is likely because of some ge the geopolitical tension going on and they start to have all this supply chain shift where they are shifting out from Taiwan to other regions like Japan, like US, like Europe and so on. And with all this uh, supply chain shift going on, what will likely uh, happen to their cost? So will the cost go up or come down? If let's say uh, companies like DSMC start to shift their supply chain to more expensive region uh, like Europe and US, it's likely will going up. So there has been a uh, cost has been going up for DSMC and they has been hinting about price increment as well for their production, all right? And lastly, the risk will be slower consumer spending recovery. So currently, as we know, China, the world number three spender, uh, slow down, uh, having economy slow down or ec economy crisis, I would say uh, property crisis, but economy also, they have been slowing down for last few years. And with with the status of third consumer spending in the world. So likely there's a lot of US companies also exposed to China as well. For example, Apple are having rely on China market as well for their iPhone sales. For example, Starbucks, Nike having high exposure in China as well. So with all this uh, slowdown or uh, drag, uh, slowdown of the economy in China, likely this will affect the US uh, companies result as well. Because a slowdown in consumer spending, especially on the discretionary and also retail sector, may affect all these uh, US-based retail companies or discretionary products companies that are having a high exposure to China. So we may see that China economic crisis may affect the consumer spending recovery. And the next point will be high inflation may also slow down the consumer spending recovery. So with the high inflation still going on, higher oil price now, and if let's say inflation remain stubborn for normal consumer like us, especially in the US, do you think that they will uh, spend in discretionary or they will cut their spending until uh, further um, better price or when the price are coming down? So with high inflation situation, what is the consumer behavior likely will likely be? Will they spend in discretionary more or they will reduce their discretionary spending? Yeah, they will cut their spending. They will cut their discretionary spending and tighten their belt as well due to high inflation, all right? And also at the same time, PC demand recovery may be delayed. As we know, all these electronics devices or 
uh, electronics uh, appliances, like for example, laptops, PC, and also at the same time, we have all these TV, washing machines, and so on. They are discretionary items as well. And uh, in the past, we do talk about PC demand recovery because in the past 2020, most of the people upgrade their laptops or PC. And now we are already on the fourth year. So in usual economic cycle, or if let's say we don't have these high inflation situations, uh, consumer may up, start to upgrade their laptops, may start to upgrade their smartphones, may start to upgrade their computers during this cycle, the four year, three to four year cycle. However, like I mentioned earlier, we have this geopolitical tension going on. Uh, and also at the same time, like I mentioned earlier, with all this supply chain shift, it may cause another round of price increase for electronic devices. This is because, like I mentioned earlier, TSMC has been hinting a potential price increase. So if let's say, if, let's say TSMC increase their price for their customer like Apple, uh, Nvidia, and also AMD, for example, TSMC said, now I'm going to charge you higher for my uh, fabrication for your high-end semiconductor. What will likely happen to all these uh, laptop, PC, smartphone prices? Will the company, uh, what will likely to happen to all these uh, laptops, uh, smartphones prices? All right, price may go up, price may increase, but it depends on whether uh, the company, like for example, NVIDIA or Apple or the laptop producer want to absorb the cost or not, whether they want to absorb the cost or not. But usually, usually the increase in price will pass on to the consumers, just like the trade war. Whatever tariff incurred usually pass to consumer. The company itself won't absorb the cost. So for example, let's say you are importing from China in US and you want to sell to US consumer. Any increase in tariff, all the costs usually will pass on to consumer. Hence, it's a lose-lose situation. Same as this uh, TSMC case. If let's say, if let's say, if let's say, the price increase by TSMC likely high chances or high probability that all this increase in cost will pass on to the consumer as well. So we do anticipate potentially there may be some price increase for consumer electronic devices. Hence, it will be uh, more worse for the inflation as well. All right, so let's move on to the next one. So next will be the opportunities. Uh, the risk may sound doom and gloom, but usually it will be taken care of with proper risk management and proper portfolio management plus how we select the stocks. And if let's say we want to enhance our return or even further mitigate all these risks, we can take a look on the opportunity side. We want to avoid all these risks, but at the same time, choose those... Uh, great companies. So what are the opportunities out there? So first of all, will be all these industries that are still aligned with key themes. For example, mega trends. So we recently have this AI, uh, this mega trends like AI, cloud computing, edge computing, big data, uh, high-end broadband, as, and so on. And one of the, two of the key themes or key growth last year or this year will be artificial intelligence, AI, and also cloud computing. And in the past, people are talking about, uh, in 2023, people are talking, when talking about AI, people are talking about infrastructure, high-end chips from NVIDIA and so on. And we may move to phase two soon, where it will be more towards the consumer side and service provider side. So 2023, a lot of service provider like Microsoft, AI service provider like Microsoft, Amazon, they has been expanding their data center, their infrastructure to support all these AI services. And this year, during the phase two, it may pass on to the consumer side, which means that they already uh, spent on infrastructure. Now we will have more devices and devices for end user, consumer to interact, to interface with all this, all this AI platform. Hence, we may see as a second phase of this uh, AI trend. And we may have a third phase as well when there's more robotics solutions coming out, automated, uh, manufacturing, automated cars, automated uh, robots coming across in our society. This might be the third phase. And at the same time, we also do see some industry recovery as well, where the server demand recovery. So with all this, uh, Microsoft, Amazon, uh, all these uh, Google spend, has been spending heavily on their uh, server or data center infrastructure, 
this created a high server demand because to process all this AI data, to train all this AI, they need a high processing power. They need high computing power. Hence, when they are setting up all this new infrastructure, a lot of uh, high performance servers are required. And all these high performance server actually created a lot of demand for all these high end semiconductor chips as well. So these are the few segments or industries that are worth to watch out for, for some opportunities. And next one will be companies with low debt, low exposure and uh, low exposure to bonds and having strong cash flow. So this usually refers to fundamentally strong companies. Those companies with low debt, low exposure to bonds and strong cash flow tends to do well during high interest rate environment. So anyone know why? Why those companies with high debt uh, will likely to perform poorer or lower performance during high inflation cycle? Uh, sorry, high interest rate cycle. My company with high debt will not likely will not do well during this cycle under high interest rate environment. All right, because higher cost, because their borrowing cost will be higher, they need to service higher debt as well. And the third opportunity will be recovery for consumer discretionary spending. So yeah, you may see that it's conflict with the risk, but mainly the segment will be more on travel and credit services in this consumer discretionary spending portion and also real estate as well. All right, so people are traveling. I think COVID already passed four years. Uh, people start to recover, uh, start to travel more often now. So some of the airlines we do see having some recovery, but airlines usually may not be a good investment companies or industry because they are more cyclical and they are prone to all this oil price increase, uh, all this uh, pay, uh, cost of uh, flight and so on. So airlines usually not a good investment sector. However, if you are a trader, you can monitor and trade them as well. And also at the same time, we do see that the credit, credit services industry are recovering. So what are the credit services company you heard uh, um, uh, heard from in the US? Heard about before? Credit services company. What are the credit services company in the US? Yes, Visa, Master, American Express. So we do notice that recently this credit services industries has been recovering and some of them actually are at a very good, um, good uh, setup, having a very good setup as well. However, does not mean we can buy immediately. You may need to do all your studies, make sure, make sure they have uh, enough, uh, they are at a good valuation and also they are near strong technical level. And lastly, will be real estate, like I mentioned, housing demand in US still high. This is because uh, people still having their, uh, this is because US still having strong employment data, people are still having their jobs and people are still buying property in US. Hence, the real estate industry or real estate sector still something to worth to monitor on as well. And another one will be companies with lesser revenue dependency on foreign markets. This refer to companies with less exposure to region like China, less exposure to region like uh, all these uh, geopolitical tension area. Hence, if let's say you are investing in the US, you are selecting companies, do make sure you also select those company having a more balanced revenue exposure. For example, like Microsoft, 50% in the US, 50% in other regions or other companies that are 100% in US also possible. This is because with all this geopolitical tension ongoing, we want more stability uh, from the company itself and also with the strong dollar. With the strong dollars, we also want company with uh, strong domestic uh, exposure in the US as well. This is because if let's say you are selling in foreign countries, when you are reporting your earnings, you need to convert all this foreign revenue into US dollars. And with strong US dollars, what are the likelihood of uh, the effect on all this revenue collected overseas? So with a strong US dollar, strong US currencies, all this revenue may be reduced because due to the foreign, uh, foreign transaction, uh, the Forex conversion, it may on paper reduce their revenue due to the US dollar conversion. As with the strong US dollars and also geopolitical tension going around, it is best to select those companies with more balanced uh, for foreign revenue exposure or high US domestic uh, revenue exposure. 
And lastly will be the money on the sidelines, 6.3 trillion in cash on the sidelines. This will potentially come into the stock market or bonds market when the rate hike cycle is over and the Fed start to um, cut the interest rate. And when people seeing more stable inflation, this will likely to happen because usually the funds will rotate ahead of the actual news itself. So do monitor for the coming data points, the, the inflation, the PCE index and so on. Do make sure you monitor them over the coming months. So with that, with that, that's towards the end of the market update. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, all the, uh, as I mentioned earlier, all this, uh, we do to, because of we have all these uh, uncertainties in the stock market, uh, we may need to uh, be more selective, be more selective when you are selecting your stocks or investment. And from our view, there are still plenty of opportunities out there. We have all these mega trends like I covered. All these uh, strong companies are still in the US. And like I mentioned earlier, US companies still provide strong growth and also the most predictable return. So let's say if you are a fund manager, where the money will likely move to, if let's say you are in cash position and when you see the economy, big picture are getting better in the future. So likely you will still go to the US stock market because US still have the most fundamentally strong companies and also uh, high growth and also at the same time in line with the mega trend. And currently the market is in a pullback and it's an opportunity for you if let's say the market recovery in the future. While you're waiting, you can actually uh, do some uh, 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 practice, some uh, do some research and also get yourself prepared for the upcoming opportunities. But however, having said that, a pullback is coming, potential opportunities. This does not mean we need we can enter immediately. We may need to have, uh, we may need to do it in a systematic way and also safe way. And the stock market is still the best instrument to generate higher returns than the inflation. And like I mentioned earlier, the US market still has the most consistent return as compared to other stock market as well. All right, and if let's say you have any questions or topic that you would like us to share more about in the future, you may fill up the survey form as our, our admin just post in the chat and we will do our best to cover them in our future events or through our social media contents or through this market update. So if you find this market update is beneficial to you, do recommend it to your friends so uh, they can benefit as well. Let's uh, conclude this market update and see you all during the next market update as well. All right, see you and thank you and bye-bye.